Hi and welcome to another video. Thank you so much for joining me. Today I'm at my local nature reserve where we'll capture a series of images and I'll be discussing the value of these for your photography, whether it be wildlife, nature or landscape photography. So let's get going. And there's a reed warbler in the reeds there. I've also just come across this family of swans. What a great little bird hide thing. So the sun is coming through its wings. So many damselflies, so many dragonflies. And as I'm walking down by the canal, hopefully you can hear it in the background, there's a reed warbler in the reeds there. And this one's very unusual. Normally they're hiding in the reeds. It's always my experience of these, but this one's actually perched right on the top of the reeds. So let's capture some images of this as we go down to the main lakes and the reservoirs in search of more of the wildlife in this nature reserve. And then we'll start to cover why we're here. Now that we've captured that image of the reed warbler, let's head on down. The location I'm in today is a nature reserve just by the canal. The Canal Trust here in the UK built this nature reserve when they refurbished the canal and the locks here. And I've also just come across this family of swans. Absolutely beautiful. The young cygnets, absolutely amazing. What a great start to this walk. What a very pleasant surprise those swans were. The reed warblers and the swans on the way down in search of the damselflies. I do hope that you enjoyed that very short gallery of the reed warblers and the swans. Absolutely brilliant. As we're walking down towards the final lakes of the, re uh, the nature reserve, please remember to hit that like and subscribe button. Your support is massively appreciated. And I just saw a dragonfly sitting on the path as I was walking up into the bird hide. So, so this bodes well for the search for the damselflies. Let's head into the bird hide and just see if we can see anything there. What a great little bird hide this is. Absolutely brilliant. Well done, the Canal Trust. Absolutely superb. We can see the view there over the lake. Not a lot on it at the moment, but patience is a virtue. So I'm just leaving the bird hide now. There's not a lot happening there, to be honest, on the actual lake. So let's go in search of the, uh, the damselflies, which is what I'm here for. But actually, we are seeing some absolutely great bird life along the canal so far. Um, we've seen a dragonfly, so let's keep on searching for these damselflies. And if you're ever going out in search of damselfly and dragonfly, this is a perfect kind of terrain and temperature side of the reservoir here. We're going along the path, which is really overgrown. So the damselflies and dragonflies love the long, long grass, especially early in the morning when it's a bit damp. It's absolutely brilliant. They come out into the sunlight to warm themselves up in preparation for the day. Absolutely, this, these conditions are perfect for this. Let me just spin you around and show you what the terrain looks like. So you can see here, we've got the lake. And if I spin it around just very slightly, you can see the wildlife, you can see how overgrown everything is. And we'll have a look at the path as well. Just look at the path, how overgrown. The damselflies love this long grass, the high plants, to s catch those early morning sun rays. So I've just found my first one. You can see them just on that dead leaf there. Now the important thing at the moment is I've got a, an aperture of about 7.1. Initially, I started off in a 1 hundredth of a second. But what I'm doing, uh, because it's so stationary, I'm dropping the shutter speed down. So in the gallery, I'll put the technical information on each of the images that I put as well in terms of the shutter speed. The other thing is I've got my telephoto on at the moment so that I'm not disturbing them. I don't want to disturb them at the moment because they're catching the first rays of the sun at this early hour. So. We want to make sure that we really, I'm sorry, I got distracted. Two dragonflies just flew past. Um, so yes, yeah, so I'm going to continue my search. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll just go through some of the scenes that I've got 
and then uh, I'll show you the images as we go through each of them. And I've just captured this one. I really love this image. I love the way that the, the damsel flies on the entirety of the leaf, slight shadow across the leaf. But one of this demonstrates the importance of being at 90 degrees, if possible, to the damsel fly to get it all in focus. Because we're dealing in such small subjects and such, such small depths of field, if you can, because these are in the direct sun today, I've managed to get that up to F11, F13 to get some of these images. So it gives me that bigger depth of field. But you just need to make sure that if you can, you're at 90 degrees to the damselfly so that you are getting the whole thing in focus. And I've just discovered a dragonfly resting on the grass as well. There's grass blowing in front of it as well, which is a bit surreal. But actually, it's backlit, so the sun is coming through its wings. Absolutely brilliant. So, so the important thing is always not to just try and take them with the sun behind you. If you can backlight some of these, they're absolutely stunning, right? so many compositions here of not just the damselfly but dragonfly, insects, absolutely a, a plethora of different small creatures which I'm capturing with the telephoto lens. There's so many and I just want to make sure that you guys can hopefully learn from those images and also be a little bit inspired and really shows the value of just going to your local nature reserves. This one is just off a main road it's probably one and a half maybe two kilometers away from the main road, a really busy road here. So it really shows the value of coming to these local places. You don't have to go out into the big mountains, to the big coasts, etc. Sometimes you can just be really local. And I've just captured some of some damselflies mating. They're actually connected. they're flying around in this area of grass just in front of me and these, these wildflowers. Absolutely amazing. And what's what it really highlights is because you've got two damselflies. Try to get to 90 degrees so that you get them all in focus. Open up your aperture a little bit. Oh, sorry, close down your aperture a little bit. So I'm on about f13 now for the actual shot. So at about one eight hundredth of a second. I really want to freeze the action. But what I'm able to get is just a glint in the eyes of the damselflies, which is a really important feature. It really draws the attention in the image to the eyes and gives us focus. Plus the setting in one of them, I'm hoping this comes out, hopefully it should be in the gallery if it came out, but they were hanging from underneath some wildflowers, which was absolutely stunning. Um, so right, I'm gonna to continue to go because this place is an absolute amazing location for these. Um, and as I say, it's a perfect location for damselflies. I hope you've got somewhere near to you and are finding this useful because it is an absolutely great thing to get out and photograph. And I'm just doing it with my telephoto today. I did bring my macro as well, but I don't want to get too close and disturb them. And one of the other aspects to consider when you're doing this, especially with damselflies, because they can be quite tolerant, they, they can stay on the same leaf quite stationary for quite a while, is to consider the framing and the composition. Use leading lines. Leaves are fantastic for leading lines, and you'll see some examples of this in the gallery. Use the leaves and the natural shapes of the leaves to frame the subject as well, to really compose this. Don't just think of zooming in just on the damselfly or the dragonfly or whatever insect it may be. Um, really think about how you can compose this. And this is why damselflies are great for practice because you can take your time a little bit. You can set up a tripod like I am today just for stability. That can give me a slower shutter speed. I can use the aperture. I can use my settings and practice on these. And it's absolutely brilliant to practice, not just macro, but close up photography as well. Having been to this location a number of times, I actually started to realise just what a great resource this was right on my doorstep. The important thing about these invaluable resources is that yes, they are absolutely brilliant for wildlife and biodiversity, but they're a superb opportunity for us as photographers to get out and use them as practice. So the key thing about 
local nature reserves is that you can get to them pretty quickly. Some people you may find you've got to travel a little bit further, but this one is just 10 minutes drive from my house and a 10 minute walk down by the canal. So it means that I can repeat my practice sessions. And every time I come, I see different wildlife. And each time I come as well, what I can find is different seasons provide different opportunities. So at the moment, the damselflies and, and the dragonflies are everywhere to be seen. The bird life is fantastic because we're, we're supposed to be in summer, although it doesn't seem to have stopped raining just yet. Opportunities, when it's local, are presented in an environment like this, both through differing weather conditions. So a couple of days ago when I came, it was sunny, there was no wind, there was dragonflies, damselflies, absolutely everywhere. Today it's been raining overnight, the ground is wet. Um, there's a strong wind as well blowing across the tops of the trees and down across the lake. So the damselflies and the dragonflies just aren't out in force. So different conditions provide different opportunities. Today there's a, quite a bit more bird life, which is absolutely brilliant. So again, that ability to continually go and visit a location, practice your skills, get different conditions, is a real bonus to being able to improve our photography. And even within small nature reserves, this one's probably, oh, I don't know, five, 600 meters long by 100 meters wide, meters, yards, pretty close to each other, aren't they? Um, so it's not that massive, but there's about four or five small lakes here running alongside the canal, built by the Canal Trust. And that provides a number of different habitats as well. So we've got the ponds, which are pretty full of fish that provides the, the, um, the kind of pond birds, the moorhens, coots, that kind of thing. I did see a cormorant fly over earlier. We've got hedgerows all the way down the sides of the lakes. And I saw a wren um, earlier, too fast for me to actually get a photograph of it, disappeared into the trees really quickly. But it's those kinds of opportunities to be patient for, and they've built some bird hides so we can come and just be patient. And hopefully if you've got a local reserve near you, it's got some bird hides or at least places you can, you can sit and relax and, and let the wildlife just be natural within the environment. And in line with that, it's not just about the wildlife, it's also about the flora and fauna. The, the plant life here is absolutely amazing. For some of you that may have seen my Sigma 105 video that I did probably about a year ago now, it's one of my kind of first very early videos, I actually filmed it here, um, used the canal and some of the flowers to actually just show the macro capabilities of that lens. So you can use not just the wildlife, but the flora and the fauna as well. And the wildlife does come in a variety of different sizes from the smallest of insects to over here, we do get buzzards flying over as well and cormorants and I've seen herons. So we, we get the small stuff and we get the, the small birds and the bigger birds as well. So in summary then, I think these are really invaluable locations for you to practice and for myself to practice photography, get better at wildlife photography, get better at macro photography, get better at landscape and nature photography. Absolutely invaluable, well worth supporting, well worth going to. And I hope that you've got one close to you that you can actually utilize and make the most of. I'd be intrigued to know if you've got ones close, if they're far away, and how much time, just drop a comment below as to how much time you actually can spend in those, practicing your photography. And on the way back, I heard this songbird. Hopefully you can still hear it in the background. My app tells me it's common chiff chaff. I'm gonna check that when I get home. And if it is different, I shall put it down below, but it's absolutely gorgeous. I'll include this in the gallery a little bit further on. Right, without further ado, please remember to hit that like and subscribe button and here's the gallery.
please remember to like and subscribe to the channel and also check out these videos next. Thank you very much for your time in watching this video and until next time, thank you and see you soon.